Hello everybody, this is Abraham with North Shore Computer Services and today I'd like to make a follow-up video to the original video that I made on a hard drive that has its head stuck on the platters. Uh, I had quite a few comments and questions ranging from everything to everything. Uh, first thing is there is a difference between clicking and um, buzzing noise. Uh, the hard drive that has its head stuck on a platter makes a distincti distinctively different noise than the one that has a problem uh, with possibly broken heads um, clicking noise basically. Uh, clicking noise is much much worse situation than a buzzing noise. So let me make a um, that clear and let me make a difference or show you the difference between the two so this hard drive here makes a clicking noise I'll be making a video on what to do in that case so This noise is bad. Okay? If you have a clicking noise, chances are your heads are damaged. If your heads are damaged, chances are your platters are damaged. If your platters are damaged, chances are your data is gone. Okay? This hard drive, this is a different hard drive uh, that I think has a head stuck on its platter. And uh, this is the noise that it makes. Let me just. So it's actually a beeping noise as opposed to a clicking noise. Okay. So this noise we can deal with. If you have a clicking noise, I would recommend going to a lab. Um, I've had quite a few people inquire if I do data recovery. I do data recovery but only for people who live nearby who actually bring their hard drive in or the computer in um, and uh, I at this point at least I do not do mail order um, repairs. So for this hard drive to start working on we're gonna need a few tools. Tools. We're gonna need a torque. We're gonna need a pick tool of some kind. We're gonna need a pry tool. This is nice. Uh, so the torque that I'm using is T6 from a tool uh, HD74502. Uh, I purchased uh, this tool from Home Depot. comes like this. So I have quite a few of these. They get lost quickly. So uh, a word about clean room. People ask me if it's a requirement to have a hard drive opened in a clean room. Uh, yes and no. Depending on what you're going to do with a hard drive and also depending on how clean your current room is. Um, there is no absolute requirement to do this in a clean room according to me okay according to the hard drive recovery ask experts it is absolutely necessary well of course it is absolutely necessary to send the hard drives to a hard drive recovery expert and uh, spend two thousand dollars on this type of repair not that I wouldn't like two thousand dollars. Okay, so there is another screw somewhere beneath the surface here. Okay, and we'll just okay. As long as it's clicking, that means it's not engaged. Then we use our pry tool to open up the hard drive. Now this hard drive is two hundred and fifty gigabytes. 
and what do we find on the inside? Okay, the heads are not in parked position, so that's a very good sign. What we're going to do is we're going to use this tool to pull the heads back, heads back, and at the same time we use the same T6 torque to turn the platter. This has to be done extremely carefully. All right. So the heads are parked. Um, there is some dust on the hard drive, but as it starts spinning very fast, the heads don't start moving until the hard drive, the platters, are at full speed. That's why this dust, it is true that the dust is right like rocks on the surface, but as it spins, the dust will go into this um, filter. So as it spins, the airflow goes around and gets trapped on the inside of this little air filter that's inside of your hard drive. The reason there is air filter in the hard drive is any one of these pieces could produce a small shaving. And that shaving would get in the workmanship of the hard drive. For that reason, there is a trap, small air filter. Okay, That's the reason why you do not absolutely need a clean room. Now, I've been babbling here for a while, and the reason for it is I do not need this hard drive. This hard drive has been... Um, basically forgotten. Nobody cares about it. Nobody cares about the data on it. Most likely the data is recoverable from this hard drive right now. I don't know yet. There is no word. So, but I'm babbling because I'd like to make it clear. Uh, another question that I've been asked is if I'm wearing any anti-static equipment. It is a good idea to do that. Touching all these electronic components could cause sparks. So, um, honestly, I'm not wearing anything. Uh, and the reason for it, experience. I know where to touch and where not to touch. As long as you're touching metal surfaces and not the electronics, you do not have to have the um, um, static equipment attached to yourself. Uh, this pad is statically distributed so that's okay um, so you might want to have some protection against static uh, I do get uh, questions and uh, concerns from data recovery experts or people who call themselves data recovery experts uh, calling me names which is just not professional I think they're kids that are trying to say things uh, honestly, if there are data recovery as experts listening right now, what I would suggest you do is post this truth on the internet about how to recover properly recover data from a hard drive. People who can do things themselves are not going to send their hard drives to you for a $2,500 recovery. People who do not know get a feeling of trust where they understand that you have nothing to hide and this is your uh, you know you do this professionally so that's the point that I'd like to make if there are recovery experts that are so afraid that something like this is gonna cut into their profits yes it's gonna cut into your profits it's gonna cut into my profits but uh, I'd rather people be happy than uh, being dark. That's what YouTube is for. So, uh, I'm stressing the fact that it is not important to have these screws torqued. You don't want to have them too tight because there is rubber ring around it. You do not want to have them too loose because, of course, the air will get inside. If the airflow inside of the hard drive is broken, meaning that you have a cover open, you will mess up your hard drive. Uh, again, I'd like to stress the fact that do this on a hard drive that does not have information on it that costs a lot of money or somebody's going to get in trouble, whatever. This is for your own, uh, basically for your own uh, data that 
if you lose it, you can live with it. But at least you're going to say to yourself, I tried it. And it didn't work. Or it did. A lot of comments are left uh, from people who have been successful. Like I said, this is not applicable to all hard drives. Some hard drives, the beeping noise that you hear, most hard drives, the clicking noise, probably don't even open it. Okay? So I have the hard drive reassembled, the heads moved back, um, we are ready for um, retrieval. Let me say a word about this tool. Okay? This comes from an external um, hard drive unit, uh, basically a USB hard drive. This unit here is a USB 3. The computer I use, I'll show you in a moment, is a USB 3 computer. Uh, the previous video, it was just a training you know, kind of showing video, but it did have, uh, it was very popular. Um, so, and a lot of questions were asked, and I thought, you know, I'd just answer those questions. Um, the reason you want USB 3 is once you connect the hard drive, you want to get your data off of it as fast as possible. If this is an Apple hard drive, I would urge to use uh, the Thunderbolt interface, which has a 10 gigabyte per second data transfer. You're going to get your stuff off of it quickly. Now, there may have been misunderstanding from people that a hard drive um, is fixed. Well, it's not fixed. Once you open a hard drive, that's it. The hard drive is junk. You do not use that hard drive. You can use it for playing, you can use it for training. You do not use that hard drive anywhere where you would have important information. So I want to make that clear. The hard drive is not fixed. Once you break the seal on a hard drive, your hard drive is gone. Even though it's working, it is done for. Okay? So, let's. I hope that's clear. Let's uh, readjust the camera. Get the light, bright light out of the way. Come on. All right. Uh, let's move the window down lower. Okay, so what I have on the screen is a uh, computer management console. Uh, you get to it by right-clicking on my computer and then manage. Okay, and then you click on uh, disk management. So once you click on disk management, oh, let me click on it, it takes you to the disk management console. Okay, let me close the other one out. Uh, this console will tell you whether disk is present and if it is present, if it's mounted properly or how it's going to work. So I have a switch on my uh, USB doohickey here. Let me show you. Let's flip the switch. Listen. And look. All right. The hard drive is working and it is mounting or mounted already. So let's close our console. Here's our folder view and there you go. So you can access your files. Now, to be absolutely uh, clear about this, the hard drive works. It does not mean that you can put it back into a computer and start using. In fact, it means completely the opposite you need to save your data as quickly as possible and basically dump this hard drive as quickly as possible uh, or mark it clearly that this hard drive is not to be used. Uh, I hope this helps um, more people in understanding what's involved in uh, hard drive data recovery. I hope it helps uh, data recovery labs to uh, understand that there is no harm in telling this to people. Uh, in my understanding, like I said, if someone is willing to do the work themselves, they're not going to pay $2,000 for recovery. Um, so I'm really hoping that somebody out there is going to post a video on how to access a clicking hard drive. Um, 
not some junky videos that are out there that really don't do anything but real stuff um, where you can actually get points on how to do it and uh, I hope I wish everybody a safe recovery day thank you for watching